The time has come when every single Christian, young, where are you, and old, has to understand why Christians are hated. But more importantly, we need to know what Jesus expects us to do when we're hated. Wouldn't you agree? Give me an amen. amen. Twenty twenty one. Is that recent enough for you? Twenty twenty one. I read an article. Exact quote. There has been a huge rise in Christian persecution worldwide since the start of the COVID-19 event. Huge rise. That's a direct quote. This 2021 report revealed that more than 340 million Christians worldwide experienced high levels of persecution last year, 2020, with 4,761 killed for their faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, that's enough. You get the point. Christian persecution like this has always been around. Started with Peter and John, it has been rising and gaining intensity ever since what I just read you. And it's not going to stop. According to Jesus, it's only going to get worse. As ideological tides begin to shift in our country, and we start to see more of a socialist way of thinking enter in, and we see a global new world order start to come on the pages of everyday news and a totalitarian form of government start to rise, you will see that kind of persecution go from the news to your front door. And if you think that could never happen in America, please pull your head out of the sand. You are living in a fantasy world. It is on its way here, if it's not already here. As they were speaking to the people, Peter and John, in front of thousands. The priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, the governing officials. And they were greatly annoyed because, why were they annoyed? Because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Time out, don't read any further. Time out. What's so annoying about that? What's the big threat that would make the government come and say, Stop what you're doing. What are they afraid of that's going to start when people start to lose their fear of death? The only tactic that these governing officials use to keep people under their control is fear. Is everybody following me? They use fear to keep their people under control. This is nothing new. One of our founding fathers, the second president of the United States, John Adams, look what he wrote. Look, look on the screen, everybody. John Adams said, fear is the foundation of most governments. You think he's right? He's absolutely right, because how are you going to control people unless you keep them afraid? That's exactly what Satan does to make sure that no matter what you do, you are terrified of dying. And along comes Peter and John saying someone can take that fear away from you and release you from the prison cell of living in fear of death all the days of your life. The church wants to set people free from the fear of death by liberating their hearts and minds, knowing that if I die, I've lost nothing because I have Jesus. Whereas the state wants to keep people in prison. And the only way that they do it is through constant introduction to fear. As soon as you're not afraid, let's put something else on their news channel so that they're more afraid. In the dark days that are ahead for the United States, and there are some dark days that are ahead, we need to remember what Jesus said. Jesus said this. We need to remember this when the time gets rough. Blessed are those who are persecuted for what? For righteousness' sake. Not their own righteousness, His righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. It's because of our association that they hate us. Jesus finishes, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Okay, what does Jesus expect from us when people hate us? When they're cursing your name. God, I hate her. God, I hate him. 
Man, I hope she isn't coming to Thanksgiving this year. Can't stand how she's always talking about Jesus. When they curse your name, this is what he tells us to do. Bless without retaliation. This is hard. He told us plainly, Luke 6, bless those who curse you. Peter says, and there is salvation in no one else. There's not a second Messiah coming. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Not the Pope, not Muhammad, not Allah, not a pastor, no other name by which you must be saved. Peter has just made the most radical claim that can be made, number one, about what's wrong with the world, and number two, about what the solution is. The Christian worldview, here's where it's going to get juicy. You all ready with me? The Christian worldview is considered radical and in many parts of the world hate speech today because of our worldview about salvation. Our claim that Jesus is the only way is a direct attack to opposing claims that, look, all roads eventually lead to God. That's pluralism. That all that really matters in the eyes of the Creator is that you're sincere about your beliefs. That's all that will matter in the end. The Christians come along, Peter and John, and the rest of us, I'm just preaching in their footsteps, they come along and say, no, there's only one way. And the rest of the world says, intolerant, hate speech. How can you say that? Paul says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, do you think he means business? Preach the word. Be ready in season and out. In other words, when they praise you for what you're preaching and when they put you in jail for what you're preaching. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming, I would say it's here, when people will not endure sound teaching. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. Don't tell me one way. Tell me lots of ways. And we'll turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, faithful Christians, always be sober-minded. Endure suffering. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. So church, the final answer to the question of the last 2,000 years, why the world hates Christians, it's very simple. It's because they hate Jesus. You don't need anything more fancy than that. They hate you because they hated him.